Hello there! Today I'm going to be counting down the top 10 best mods for Kerbal Space Program. A little over three years ago, I published a similar video counting down the top 5 best mods. But since then, and especially since the death of KSP2, modding for this game has gone completely insane old style. There has been a revitalization of the modding community like I have never seen before. So I thought now would be a good time to update my list and not only showcase some of the fantastic new mods released by the community, but also to see how some of the older mods have stood the test of time. But before we get started, there is a very exciting membership button or Patreon link you can click if you are interested, and of course, links to all the mods are in the description. Alrighty, now let's get ranking. Coming in the number 10 spot is a mod that I bet many of you have and use very often. That mod is HyperEdit. For those of you who are unaware, HyperEdit can most simply be described as a cheats mod. It lets you fill or empty fuel tanks in flight, change how much electric charge you have, teleport, and just basically lets you play god over the Kerbal universe. While at first this mod looks a little simplistic, it is not only very powerful, but has many more use cases than is apparently obvious. One of my favorite things about HyperEdit is that not only does it allow you to modify the orbits of the craft in your save, but also the planets themselves. In this video I made a few years ago, I used HyperEdit to make every day on Kerbin exactly 10 seconds long, which, which went well. So is HyperEdit the most complex or detailed mod ever made? Nope. But is it one of the most useful? And the answer to that question is absolutely. And that is why it takes the number 10 spot. In ninth place, we have McJeb, the all you can ask for upgrade to the dreaded SAS button. If you have a craft that is difficult to fly or is having stability issues, just head over to McJeb, turn on smart ASS, and problem solved. I've honestly been quite surprised by how well McJeb was able to control even the most poorly designed vehicles. Not only does McJeb offer a much needed quality of life upgrade, but it also has an array of other very useful features. Trying to land a rocket? McJeb has you covered. Just activate landing guidance and it will do the suicide burn for you. It can even fully automatically launch rockets and insert them into whichever orbit you would like. Additionally, and this is a feature I personally really like, it lets you record and view telemetry. This feature is actually what made this video possible. Using McJeb, I was able to compare two Starship launches, one with the second version of Raptor and the other with the third to illustrate the effects TWR has on launch efficiency. So uh, thank you, Sarbian, you made a great mod. Speaking of Starship, in the 8th spot we have the single best recreation of a real life launch system ever made in KSP, and that is the double whammy of Starship Launch Expansion and Starship Expansion Project. While I am cheating a little by including two mods in this list, I would argue that these two mods are functionally one, as they are built to work with each other and even have some of the same people working on them. These mods provide you with a highly detailed Starship spacecraft and super heavy booster, along with a fully functional launch pad. We have working chopsticks with landing rails, pushers, and catching and stacking capabilities. There is also an orbital launch mount with some incredible textures and animations, and an accurate tower with a working elevator running up the side of it. These mods have been in development for many years already and have a ton of talented people working on them, like Kari, SamCG14, Fossilized, IsaQuest, Jonas94, Arito Cow, Sophie Brink, and probably some others I forgot to mention. Long story short, if you want an incredible Starship, get Starship Launch Expansion and Starship Expansion Project. Alright, so I'm going to admit I do not have a lot of experience with the mod of the number 7 spot. It's a really cool mod, just not the type of thing I usually want to do in KSP. With this said, I am still including it because even though I haven't used it much, I can still appreciate not only the impressive capabilities it adds to Kerbal, but also the sheer scale of it. And that mod is none other than BD Armory. If you are unfamiliar, BD Armory is a mod that adds combat to Kerbal Space Program. Missiles, bombs, guns, and all sorts of other things to blow people up with. 
beyond weapons that also includes radar and defensive systems. So if you're into dogfighting and want KSB to be a game to do that in, BD Armory is for you. Personally, most of what I've used BD for has been dropping nukes on things, but there are people who have actually invested time into this mod and done some pretty cool things with it. One series I really enjoyed was Scott Manley's Project Runway, which is a design competition using BD Armory where we got to see a bunch of cool designs go at each other. Number 6 is a mod that I also haven't used a ton, but is nonetheless revolutionary and an absolutely incredible creation. Perhaps one of the simpler mods on this list, Principia, offers such an awesome upgrade I had to include it. This mod's main claim to fame is that it adds n-body gravitation into KSP. If you don't know how Kerbal Physics works, put simply, your craft can only ever be affected by the gravity of a single body at a time. This means when you're in Kerbin's sphere of influence, you only feel the effects of Kerbin's gravity, and when you're in the Mun's sphere of influence, you only feel the effects of the Mun's gravity. This is, of course, not how real life works. Gravity doesn't just stop existing when you get far enough away from a planet. I mean, if it was, we wouldn't have Lagrange points, for example. So, in an attempt to make KSP's physics more realistic, Principia makes the gravity of many different bodies act on your craft at the same time. I will admit, I'm no expert, but smarter people than me have gotten pretty creative with the orbits they've been able to create using Principia, such as in this video by Yax, where he was able to get his spacecraft into a square orbit, which is honestly pretty funny. Um, anyway, that's Principia though, a super cool mod that undoubtedly deserves its spot as the 6th best mod for Kerbal Space Program. Oh boy, have I got a good one for number 5. It took me a lot of restraint for me to not put this at number 1 because this thing blew my mind when it first came out. I am, of course, talking about the excellent Volumetric Clouds mod by Blackrack. In terms of visual mods, this is the best of the best. For me, nothing has added more immersion to KSP than Volumetric Clouds. Not only does this mod come with its famous clouds, but also as weather elements such as rain and lightning. There is nothing more awesome than launching a rocket through a dark and violent storm before flying through a cloud layer and emerging into clear blue skies. Like I said, I really wanted to put this at number one because I really do believe it is one of the most impressive mods ever made. But alas, I had to be a little more reasonable because at the end of the day, it is still just a visual mod. And I think the top spots should be reserved for mods that really transform the game and give the player new ways to interact with it. Uh, a quick note though, before we move on for people who want to download this mod, it is currently in early access and paywalled in Black Rack's Patreon. Subscribing only costs about $5 per month, so if you can afford it, I think it is well worth the price. Not only do you get a fantastic mod, but you're also supporting one of the best KSP creators out there. In fourth place, we have a mod that lets you build things in KSP, Kerbal Constructs. Well, wait a minute. Can't you already build things in KSP? Isn't that the point of the game? Okay, yes, but with Kerbal Constructs, you can build things differently. The core functionality of KK is that it allows you to place and move all of the stock buildings and structures. So think of the VAB, the runway, the tracking station, and even the Easter eggs like the Kraken or pyramids. On its own, this is a super cool feature, but with the addition of some extra mods like Kerbinside or Tundra Space Center, you can get some pretty awesome custom objects to play around with. But if you don't want to spend hours building some intricate launch site or spaceport, then no problem! Probably the main function of some of these mods I mentioned before is they add the stuff for you. So here are some awesome POIs added by Kerbinside, for example. Starting out the top three is going to be a planet pack. Back in my other top mods video, I combined all planet packs under the umbrella of Copernicus, as it is the mod that enables these bodies to be created in the first place. However, 
On second thought, I've decided that it's not fair to just ignore all the amazing work some creators have done texturing and configuring these planets. So this time around, I decided to again include Copernicus, but also choose what I believe to be the best planet pack and it will share the spot. And that honor, of course, will go to the wonderful interstellar mega pack, Galaxies Unbound by Star Crusher. Now, before I start talking about the mod, I do want to briefly mention that this mod, as of the date of recording, is, is currently unavailable to download. I'm not too sure the specific reason Star Crusher has taken it down, but I believe it has something to do with an updated version he's working on. But because I don't have access to the mod currently, the footage you see in the background will all be from some of my older videos and streams. But anyway, GU is an absolutely gigantic mod that adds over 15 brand new and unique star systems. Along with that are dozens of new and diverse planets and moons for you to explore. From the gooey swamp-like moon of Bor, to the snowy wasteland of Trite, even to Ron, home to these weird mushroom tree things. GU's destinations are so plentiful and unique that I promise this is a pack you will never get bored with. And that's not even mentioning the more exotic elements of the pack, like rogue planets, black holes, neutron stars, and so much more. If you want to explore, you want GU. And let's of course not forget to give Copernicus its credit. After all, it is the mod that makes it possible for these planet packs to exist at all. So thank you, Copernicus. So as I stated earlier, mods that significantly change how you play KSP are going to rank higher, and I can't think of a mod that changes the game more than Kerbal Operating System, a mod that turns Kerbal from a building and flying open world type exploration game to basically a programming system. KOS, which comes with its own language, allows you to program your rockets to fly and maneuver by themselves. And people have gone a little crazy with this. This script, for example, made by Jonas92 for Kari's Starship Expansion Project, is able to fly a full Starship launch profile perfectly, including a functional and reliable booster catch. This script, by Giolodondi, apologize if I mispronounced that, but it can perform a full space shuttle re-entry and glide down all the way from orbit to a safe landing on a runway. While I'm personally not big into the programming side, for the people who are, KOS completely changes the thesis of Kerbal. The capabilities and applications of this mod are just so huge and diverse that it deserves nothing less than the number two spot. Before we crown our number one spot for the best mod in KSP, let's briefly list some honorable mentions. Mods that are absolutely fantastic, but just barely missed the top 10. This includes Free IVA, Tundra, Near Future Tech, Hangar Extender, Blue Dog Design Bureau, Real Solar System, Realism Overhaul, and Tweak Scale. And now, on to the number one spot. I'll admit something. I did not want to put this mod at number one. It is pretty buggy, and I haven't used it in years. But in the end, it is just so revolutionary that I couldn't bring myself to dethrone it. So, without further ado, just like in my last mod ranking video, the number one best mod for Kerbal Space Program is Luna Multiplayer. So if you're unaware, multiplayer actually exists in KSP, which like I said before, for a single player game is pretty wild. But as I alluded to, it is far from a perfect experience and pretty much falls apart if you try to put more than 10 people on a single server. But I've gotten it to work well enough for long enough that I've been able to enjoy some actual KSP multiplayer. We've even been able to do some cool streams on multiplayer a little while ago, which when they worked were pretty fun. So in conclusion, simply because of how impressive it is that it adds a working multiplayer, for the second time in a row, LMP is crowned the best mod for KSP. Alright, so that is just about gonna do it. 
I hope you all enjoyed this video and didn't get too upset if your favorite mod didn't quite make the cut, but with that, I'd like to say thank you for watching, we'll see you next time, please rate or comment to this video. Once again, thank you for watching, we'll see you next time, and bye!